Uh, thank you, Akash, for covering the policy so well. Uh, it is like of great use for for those who are managing the environments and everything. So yes, folks, uh, thank you so much for joining in on Saturday. Uh, we know that it is a weekend, but uh, what better than learning something over a weekend, right? So let's kick start today's session. So what probably I'm going to do is uh, today's session is going to be very interesting. So uh, many of you might uh, be aware about Azure, the resources which you can provision on Azure. But majorly, you would have dived into Azure portal, created storage account, VMs, uh, and lot of cognitive services, machine learning. There are so many resources, right? From right from the SQL Server to Azure SQL Database to lots of resources which you can provision for your environment for your business scenario. So many of us would have tried it from the portal. But what is the most uh, beneficial approach when I say that I want to automate that? Or let's say I want to replicate that for my dev, for my UAT, for my production. I, I want exact same environment to be deployed with exact policies uh, and everything intact. So how you can do that? You can do that by uh, writing a piece of code, which we call it as Azure Infrastructure as a Code. So today's session uh, will majorly revolve around what is Azure Infrastructure as a Code, how you can provision resources uh, via imperative approach, declarative approach, and also how you can automate it by using pipelines. So before diving into the agenda, I have a very interesting agenda for you all. I have kept a, a beautiful demo and we'll do it hands-on live as well so that you all can uh, use this into your business scenarios. A quick introduction about me, as Smita mentioned, I am a Microsoft MVP and also I am working at Rapid Circle as a technical consultant. So uh, majorly my work revolves around creating applications on Microsoft 365 or creating apps on Power Platform. Apart from that also, uh, because Azure. Someone is on board. Yeah. So uh, apart from that, also I work on uh, Azure infrastructure as a code, which I'll cover today, uh, wherein we'll create, uh, wherein we'll write scripts on PowerShell, we'll create an ARM template, and uh, also we'll deploy that ARM template and also automating using pipelines. So a short introduction about me. You can reach out. You can read out my blogs on my blog site as well. Uh, let's just quickly cover the agenda. So as you can see, today's agenda is about we'll understand infrastructure as a code the uh, provisioning part, how you can provision that. So when I talk about provisioning, you can, let's say, let's consider for an example, storage account. How you can create storage account from portal, we all know that by now, right? If someone is not aware, then they can uh, gain insights on it from this session. Apart from portal, you can create storage account uh, from your PowerShell script also by creating an ARM template and we'll deploy that storage account, same storage account uh, using pipeline as well. So these are the different aspects of agenda, provisioning, creating scripts, writing and template and deployment. Okay, now let's just quickly cover infrastructure as a code. Now, when I talk about infrastructure as a code, I will break this into pieces. By this, uh, from infrastructure as a code itself, probably you might be able to understand that something is related to, something may be related to the, the infrastructure. When I talk about infrastructure, here I'm talking about Azure infrastructure. Uh, in Azure infrastructure, maybe you can say it, it is any resources. Either it can be a resource group with some of the SQL server storage account. Also, the SQL server might have SQL database. That SQL database might hold some tables. Or Azure SQL database might have some of the pre-default or predefined tables with all the data in it. And you want to deploy this existing environment with existing policies, permissions, everything intact in different environments. This is what we call it as an infrastructure. Now, when I talk about infrastructure as a code, what I'm telling is we'll deploy this infrastructure as a code is kind of you will write some piece of code to, to provision your infrastructure. And when I talk about provisioning, it can be of either types, either it can be a PowerShell script, you can write a few lines of code, which will help you, which will deploy it in your Azure environment, or else you can do that same via writing an ARM template, or you can also automate it by, while you can create a pipeline, which will deploy that piece of code for you and it will deploy it in each environment. So this is what infrastructure as a code it is. This is what I have written in. Uh, this is what Microsoft tells in terms of definition. Infrastructure as a code basically it uses DevOps methodology and it also keeps your versioning intact. So the beautiful part about DevOps is 
if you are deploying a piece of code and if you are making some changes into that piece of code you can bump the version and you can deploy the latest of it as well so it keeps each version intact so if you want to go back to the previous version you can do that if you go if you want to stay at the top of the latest version you can do that as well that is what infrastructure as a code or devops helps it helps in maintaining a versions now first approach is imperative approach to explain this imperative approach i'll take a small example let's say i am residing at a tower a and i want to move to uh, my company from my house i want to move to my company and my company has you know that that route is basically what i want to travel to now when i talk about imperative approach what will happen is from my house to my office i have to give each and every step each and every detail okay i'll have to uh, come out of my house i'll have to open the gate i'll have to travel down through the elevator to move down i'll walk through the main gate of my building and i'll take left route right route and all those steps i'll have to cover while i am writing a code in imperative approach you can consider imperative approach in this scenario is powershell script so let's say the same example i want to travel to my office from my home i am providing each step do this thing take left take right stop at the uh, signal and then do my processing at the end uh, at the start gate of my company and all those steps i'll have to write down i'll have to give the powershell script each detailing that okay i'll have to stop here i'll have to travel here i'll have to take this route and all of that now what happens is while writing this piece of code you might come across various scenarios let's say i am not starting my journey from my home i am starting from somewhere else then it should follow the same approach uh, my end destination is company right i want to travel to my company then if i use that same piece of code then it will not be able to follow that right because it is firstly my code was written from my house to my company now i have to make some changes to my code which will help me follow the route of from some other location to the company so same thing now let's talk about the real time example when we talk about provisioning this was the simple example of imperative approach in terms of uh, what exactly imperative approach is now when i say i want to deploy a storage account that storage account should be of type lrs and uh, some different properties which i want to deploy it of the storage account what i will do is i'll write a piece of code firstly i'll connect it to my azure definitely uh, i'll have to connect to start uh, deploying my resources to there so once you connect it you have to deploy you have to create a storage account then once your storage account is uh, deployed you have created you will give that okay this is my type of storage account which i want to provision so these are the steps which you will take now let's say i want to deploy a container in the storage account as well now my storage account is created and what i'll have to do is i'll have to check okay is this container already residing or no that is one scenario which kicked in something else now let's say the storage account which created with the container had some different properties and now now i want to change some different properties of that container so you'll have to make all these scenarios to fit into your imperative approach this is what powershell scripting does so as you can see from the screen first step when you want to write powershell script you will have to install module now when i talk about installing a module this what this module holds so it helps you to create all the different types of resources this is a piece of code an sdk which is already created which you get it by default once you install you can provision n number of resources from this so this is what you have to write when you come for the first time if you don't have azure module installed you have to install this module and with the name the module name is az you have to provide the scope so uh, what happens is sometimes you are working on your uh, company a, a company pcs or any virtual machine or any other different kind of uh, pc uh, it does not need to have admin control right you might not have the admin perm permissions to install the module so what you can do is you can install it for your scope which is your current user scope so it will only be installed for you and it will not ask admin privileges and repository it will uh, add all this ps gallery repository and by force i am saying that install by force so this is the property which i am giving once you are once you have installed this you can directly leverage this command which is connect az account once you are connected you can perform you can create storage account if you have the correct permissions into your azure environment you can do you can do role assignment provisioning etc and number of things so this is the first step before writing the code if you want to provision using powershell you will need uh, az account to be installed coming to the next screen
so now once you have installed the storage uh, once you have installed the az module uh, you can see that i am calling the command get installed module so that uh, i can verify whether my module is installed or not so right now you can see from the screenshot that the name of the module was az which was already installed some description was also given now let me jump back to my powershell so that i can show you now this is my powershell uh, and let me just zoom in okay so now what i can do is i'll type in get install and i'll type in tab so what it does is it will uh, if you are using tab it will use all your it will fetch all the commands it, which it has and it will suggest you so i don't want install language i want install module and i will tab so it it is giving me the whole command once i type in enter it will give me all the installed modules for the system right now if you want to get only some uh, only your required if you want to filter that what you can do is you can give so if you can observe it fetch to me all the install modules and now from here you can see that i am just a second yeah yeah from here you can see the properties name repository description etc now i want to get the name installed module tab name is the property Uh, what I want to fetch, I want to fetch AZ. As you can see, I got the installed module, which was AZ. Which version is installed? Seven dot O dot O, and it is giving me the description that this is the Azure PowerShell, and you can use all the commands of this module. Now, if I connect, now let's see, connect to AZ, and if I write tab, it is giving me. Now. while connecting to the az account it will take it will connect it to your azure okay now what if you want to connect it to a particular subscription how you can do that let's just go ahead and see i'll yeah i am not connecting right now i want to connect to my subscription and not any subscription uh, which it takes as the first subscription so let me just provide subscription as a parameter and i i can key in the subscription as well in here so once you key in the subscription it will directly connect it to your azure at your subscription account now let's go back to the we'll come to the demo at the end yeah now once you are connected to your azure account you can start performing different operations so the first operation which i have noted down here is azure role assignment now when i talk about azure role assignment or any uh, provisioning of storage account or anything so let's say role assignment okay now when i talk about role assignment uh, it is kind of a permissioning model for your azure resources if you go to your azure portal whenever you navigate to azure portal you will see our back role assignment what happens is let's say th for this storage account i want to give access to only this user or only this group or uh, this or uh, app registration which is a service principle if you want to give access to your storage account to only few of the key identified people or group or service principle that is when role assignment comes to uh, comes to the picture now just giving access doesn't work right maybe let's say for this on this storage account some of the users are going to just have a uh, read permission some of them are going to contribute so that they can upload the pictures or upload the files into the container or some of the uh, users might just have the full control of the storage account they can manage they can update the properties of the storage account they can create new containers etc so how you can manage that that is by giving role assignment so there are different type of role assignment which are built in role assignments given by azure microsoft you can pick up any of uh, the role assignment let's say i want to give a blob contain contributor role storage contrib blo uh, storage blob contributor role so what will happen is for this particular storage account only the people who has this role assignment they can contribute on the cont container they can start uploading the files they can uh, create different uh, files inside it they can upload and they can manage the properties of that container everything for only that particular container that is the different role assignment now when i talk about storage account contributor role they can have the access they can uh, update the properties of the storage container and etc these are the different type of role assignments uh, if you want to list down all the role assignment then what you can do is you can just type in the command get az role assignment and it will list all the role assignments which are possible all the built in role assignments but if you want to have a custom role assignment let's say i want to give a role assignment which is only for a custom scenario you can create your own role assignment as well you can key uh, key in your 
users, you can key in your group and you can give the permission to them. So definitely you can create custom as well as you can use built-in role assignment. Now let's see different role assignments by going to the Azure. I pick this command, get AC role assignment tab. Let's hit enter. Okay. So right now, if you observe what it is showing me is, this is why I uh, came in here and I did not redirect to the next slide because the next slide itself is saying the same thing. Previously, the all these commands used to work with Azure AD graph. Now, all these commands are, are been migrated to Microsoft graph. So as you observe, it, it is the exact same warning I'm getting that previously the commands were on Azure AD and now it is migrated to graph. So please write the commands which are of graph commands. So this is what the slide itself is elaborating on. So as you can see, if I would have used get AZAD user, now AZAD is using the Azure AD graph and not Microsoft graph. So it would have given me a warning. And instead of this, you can use MG user, get me, get MG user, and that will directly give you the current logged in user and the all the Microsoft graph users in that Azure. So you can fetch using commands, you can fetch all the details and everything. What we are going to do is I'm just sh uh, showing you some of the key identified operations which you can perform. Either it can be of Azure AD operations, which is role based, role based or provisioning of resources, which we'll see using storage account as well. And some of the different operations which you can perform using connect AZ module, which is a AZ module. Now let's go ahead and see the automation. So as you can see from the screenshot, get AZ AD user display name. This is the, I want this user details. By this user, what I'll get is display name of the user, object ID of the user, email ID and user principal name. Once I key in this command, it will fetch me all the details of the user. Not just user, you can also get the details of the group. Similarly, what you can do is, uh, right now I'm writing a command which will create a group. As you can see, new AZAD group, display name, this is the display name of the user and the mail nickname, I don't want to set any mail nickname right now. That is why it is not set. Once I type or enter the command, your group will be created with this object ID. Object IDs are just an identification for your group or a user. It, it, it is created by default. You don't have to key in. It is a GUID. It will be created and it will be unique for each group and each user. Now let's come to the provisioning part. Here I, I can understand you might not be able to see the uh, scripts, but what I'm doing here is I'm connecting to the Azure account. I'm giving a variable. This is a variable which is storing the test RG. This is the resource group name. I'm key keying the location, which location I want to create my resource group, West Europe. And once I'm done, so what I'm doing is I'm, I'll validate first thing because we are writing a script. What we'll do is we have to consider, we have to keep in mind all the scenarios. We have to check whether this resource group already exists. If not, then create this resource group for me. So this is what I'm doing. Firstly, I'll uh, this will come inside a try catch. Once you write inside the try that, please get me the resource group with this name. If it doesn't, if there is no such resource group, if it is null or empty, then please go ahead and create the resource group for me. Once you get the resource group, you can fetch all the details of the resource group, which is resource group name, the location of the resource group, etc. And then you can print the resource group name as well. Now, what we'll do is we'll quickly jump to the PowerShell demo so that you can understand more. Now I am into my Visual Studio code. Just hide this. Yeah. In this, what I have done is I've created a PowerShell. And what I am I am doing is I am creating a variable, which is an account name. This is the storage account name which I, which I want to provision. I already have the resource group. So let me just go to my Azure portal. You can see this is a resource group which I already have. I want to create a storage account in this resource group. And that storage account should be of SKU LRS. So that this is the standard LRS. Let me just change to demo. Azure, you can see demo 2020. Okay. Now, once I have the storage account name here, uh, I want to deploy it to the resource group, this resource group. The SKU will be of type LRS. Location will be Central India, or you can keep uh, the location of your storage, uh, resource group as well. What we'll do is we'll pick this up. We will run this to my terminal, new terminal. 
I'll paste it. So I have set all the variables. Now what next? I'll connect it to my Azure. And what am I doing is I'm connecting to a diff. I'm connecting to my subscription. Okay. So that is why I've keyed in subscription. Let's just quickly wait for the pop-up to come. Okay. See, just taking some time. I do. Yeah, I think it is there. Yeah. So once I am connected, we'll perform the operation. We'll create a storage account. Just give it a minute to load. Next, what am I doing is I'm writing a command. Till the time, let's just see the command. This is the new storage account command. If you uh, follow the Microsoft documentation, you will get all the commands which are supported in AZ module. I am using this command, which is which will create a new storage account for me. What are the properties it needs is, so consider a scenario like this. If you want, this is similar to what you are doing in your portal. When you go to the portal, you will create a resource group. In that resource group, you will create a resource, which is a storage account. So for creating a storage account, you will need a resource group, right? You firstly, you created a resource group because you had a permission on that resource group. You were given a contributor access. Only then you were able to create the storage account in that resource group. Similar thing, we are doing it from the scripts. In the script, what have I done is I have already created the resource group from portal. Hence, I am giving the name here. Next, I want to create a storage account. For that, I am writing a command, new AZ storage account. In that, what I am telling it, please create a storage account in this resource group. This is the resource group which it will get from the variable. What will be the name of your storage account? It will be the name which I've given in the variable, which is this thing. And what will be the SKU name or the type of storage account which you want to create? It is standard LRS. And another thing is you will also have to give connection. So what happens right now? It is fine. But ideally, when you are keying in this whole uh, thing, you also have to give the connection. What is that uh, property? There is one property wherein you can give the connection also. And what it will do is it will maintain, the, you can store this connection in a variable and then pass this connection to your command line so that it will always use this connection for your provisioning. Now let's see whether the, yeah, it is done. It is connected. Now what I will do is I'll write out, put that creating a command. So this is just for the readability that, okay, it is creating once, this file will be executed at once, then you have to uh, give your user the readability format also that what is happening right now, what script is doing, hence uh, that right output was written. Now, what we'll do is we'll just quickly create a storage account. Let's see. Okay. Let's give it a minute to create. And once it is created, we can fetch all the details of the storage account. And we'll also see in the portal whether it was created or not. So let's just refresh. Provisioning should be in process. Let's just give it a minute. I think it should be in. Next, when we talk about imperative approach, once you have created a storage account, what we'll do is we'll create a container in the storage account. And what we will do next is once your container is created, we'll delete that container from the portal and we'll run this command again to see what it does. OK, so let's just I think it is created. Now let's print our. Print our storage account variable. To get the details. So now you can see that the storage account with this name, which we keyed in, was already now it is created and it is created with this kind standard LRS and the current timestamp and the provisioning was successful. So let's just go and see. You can see this storage account, it got created and it is taking the correct property account kind and also the SKU, which was standard LRS. So this is how your storage account, you can create it. Now let's go So right now. You can see the container. It is empty. Now I want to create a container in my storage account as well. What we'll do is we'll create a container. So for the container, you will have to pass the storage account context. So what am I talking here is let's go to the portal. Now you can see this storage account and because you are inside the storage account, you know that, okay, I want to create a container for this storage account. 
how will you tell your command or your script while you're provisioning that okay i want to create a container inside this storage account and not in any other storage accounts inside my this this source group how you can do that by providing a context so we'll create a context for this storage account grabbing that context we'll pass it to the container so that the container will be created only for this particular storage account i'll do that here so as you can see from this script i am create uh, getting the key so firstly we we'll need a storage account key to create a context so i'll get the key once i have the key i'll create a context so what i am doing is i'm creating a new context for that particular storage account and passing that key so i'll show you where you can find that key in your portal as well so let this get the context and get the test global assure now i have changed the name i will create a container oops oh okay so right now when you create a container you have to make sure that it follows the naming convention so let me go here and let me type in test global azure so you see this warning this error i am getting this exact same error it is showing me in my script as well so what i will do is i will change it test global azure bt and let's test again now it should create a container with the public access of property because i did not explicitly mention what property i want and now it should have it so did you see this is the container which i have already got now let's cancel testing okay inside my container this is the container which i have created now you would be wondering where did i got the, that those keys and everything so let's go to this container storage account and we will go to the properties this is the access keys yeah so these are the keys using this key we are creating a context so this is what i did here in this script if you observe it get key so this is getting this two keys key one key two once i have that what i am say, am i saying is i just want the first key i don't want because we have two so that is an array i am just getting the first key from those two keys and which key i am getting for that particular storage account which is residing in that resource group that is how i am getting the key and using that key i am creating a context once i have the context i have created my container done now let's say that i want to Uh, we saw this this was a very good scenario wherein i was able to go from path a to path b which was my destination now what if something changed in between now let me go to my storage account if you observe here that the type which is right now created is lrs i want to change the type to something else grs okay there are different types of uh, storage account which you can create if i want to change that i have to make some changes to my script right if i run this exact same thing again what it will do is it will say that such this storage account already exist and it will throw me an error now what i did is i'll write this is where imperative approach has some drawback you have to key in all the possible scenarios only then it will work fine so now what i did is i am checking my storage account whether that storage account exist or not if it doesn't exist then i am writing in okay not found and if it exists then i am checking the type or the uh, which the type which you already observe it was lrs then it will change it to grs so these all things you have to make the changes so let, let's now just go ahead and type this and let's go ahead and see okay now it is run what it is showing me that account already exist definitely because we created the account once the account existed what it checked is what was the type of that storage account whether it was lrs okay if it was lrs which was provided then change it to the updated one which was grs so it updated the storage account so let's just go ahead and see into a portal refresh refresh okay let me just check what is the version which i gave uh let me just quickly check into my this thing okay if it existed then changing the account type and what was the account type oh okay i missed changing it from here grs i want to now change the sku to grs now what i'll do is i'll print this variable and now storage account 
SKU name should not be equal to the storage account SKU. Only then it will update. What we'll do is we'll run this again. Okay. Now did you see? Because firstly those accounts were same, IR key in same LRS, and it was matching with the LRS, so it did not update it. Now it is not equal to the currently given. SKU, hence it changed it to GRS. So this is how you can you have to fit in the scenario in your code so that it will take according to the user input. It, give it a minute to reflect. Once it is done, then you will be able to get the GRS ones as well. So this is how PowerShell imperative approach works. So this is this is how you have to key in all these scenarios. Now let's just go ahead and look at the other approach, which is ARM template. This was the imperative approach. We'll go to the declarative approach and then we'll compare those two approaches. Okay. Now we talked about imperative, how you can create PowerShell script, how you can. Uh, now let's just go ahead and see one more scenario before missing out. Access control as well. So I created my storage account. If I want to manage access control by using scripts, I can do that. You have to just write commands and then you can give the built in roles to your user, your group. Or else from the portal, definitely everyone knows how to give access control from the portal. But if you are not aware, then how you can do this, you can just add your access control, add role assignment, and you can choose in from all these different role assignments. Once you type in storage account, I just want to show you the built in role assignment which Microsoft gives for you. So these are the different storage account role assignments which you get by default. And these are the blob. Blob is a container which you can also leverage. So if you give blob data contributor, owner, leader, or delegator, and also for the storage account, you can create a contributor role or the key operator who can manage your keys inside a storage account and the backup contributor. These are the out of the box built in role assignment. But if you have some scenario, let's say I want to give storage account reader role and it is not present right now, you can give ahead, go ahead and create your own custom role assignment and give that as well. So role assignment is also possible from your scripts. Everything is possible from script. It is like uh, exactly same thing which you're doing from the portal. You have to do it from the PowerShell script as well. Now let's go ahead and look at the deployment or the ARM template, how you can create it. So creating ARM templates is like very easy and it is very readable also for humans. So this is kind of a JSON. Uh, you already might be aware how JSON looks. It is kind of a key value format and it comes into a curly braces, right? This is how the JSON format looks like. When I talk about ARM template, how different it is from the imperative PowerShell approach. Uh, firstly, ARM template is a dec declarative approach. Also, BICEP and your Terraform, these three are a declarative approach. What uh, declarative approach does is, it, you just have to give the end result. So let's say what, I, what I'm trying to do is, I'm trying to create a storage account. All I have to tell my ARM template is, I want to create a storage account. The SQ type should be LRS. And the version or the diff it should be of V2 storage account version two or version one, any of those gen one, gen two, you can provide it. Once you give the detail, the end result, then it is on up to the ARM template. It will handle all the scenarios for in, in, in itself. So what we did in PowerShell is we have to uh, give in that, okay, if the storage account exists, please do this. If it doesn't exist, do that. And if the container exists or doesn't exist, if it is deleted, check the type and everything. You have to type in everything there. Here, you don't have to do anything. All you have to do is focus on the end result. I want to create this storage account and it should be in this resource group with this type done. Rest everything will be managed by the template itself. So this is how the schema looks like in a declarative approach. If you observe the schema is of type this version, this is the API version 2019.401 and this is the deployment template, the content version and the resources. The heart of ARM template is in resources and the schema template type. What happens in these resources is, this is the array type. In this you have to give your code wherein you will tell the ARM template that okay, I want to deploy SQL server, I want to deploy Azure SQL database, I want to deploy storage account. This is where the main picture comes in. Let's go ahead and look into the template. This is the sample ARM template wherein you can see the schema. This is the curly bracket open and close. Same schema I'm using the content version next. Definitely uh, I, I created a variable in my PowerShell write. Now what happens in ARM template? You can store all the variables. These are the you know variable of kind of in the parameters. 
this is one section which is parameter section the resource section there will be output as well right now in the parameters what i am am i doing is i can give storage account name description the sku type all those things so one search parameter you can see storage account name the default value i am giving giving it as this kind of and the type you can define the type as well for each of your parameters this will be of string type i have defined my parameter done variables with variables you can perform some operations so let's say i want to concat i want so this will be a recursive approach right when you deploy or you provision let's say you are deploying tons of or hundreds of storage account at one in one environment one environment or one resource group but definitely uh, with the same name you can't deploy it again and again right so you can create key in variable wherein you can create a, a automatic generated number and you can add formulas or functions to that so uh, every time it will have unique number and with that unique number it will create a storage account or with that unique combination of alphanumeric or any alphabets you can create a storage account so this is what i am do i am doing i am concatenating my storage account name with the arm because i am deploying it using arm template once i have done that i have i've used your concat function now the main information resides in resources till now we just declared a variable we just uh, uh, said that okay my storage account name should look like this and everything once you have this what exactly we are going to do is we are going to deploy a storage account how the, my arm template will know because i am going to type in the type here what is a resource type i want to uh, provision it is a storage account this is the resource type which is available in microsoft documentation for any different type of resources you will have different type of types you can key in that based on that your arm template will be able to identify what type of storage what type of resource you are trying to provision once you have that you give the name and the version location also you can give the tags associated with your storage account kind and sku once this is done you can also get grab the output i am grabbing the storage account name in the output and i'm showing it in this variable done this is how arm template works now what happens is let's say i deploy this arm template and i change the version or change the sku to grs what it will do is it will check behind the scenes whether the same storage account exists if yes then it will go ahead and update the sku it will not tell me that okay take some steps to find whether the storage account exists or not it does that behind the scenes let's just go ahead and see this in action okay before that we also have to look into this now we have created our json template uh, we wrote down that uh, all of that json now how will i deploy it definitely the deployment will happen using a powershell script this is the one liner script which you have to write in what it does is it deploys your arm templates arm template will be of file.json and that will be your template file so what we are doing is we are grabbing that template file and we are deploying that to our resource group so this is just one line of powershell script which you have to write to deploy arm templates and that command is new az resource group deployment now let's just go ahead and check our arm template this is my schema as you can observe you can also install the arm formatter so that you can you know you just have to write the scheme this a uh, few steps and it will give the whole template to you and you can just modify and add resources accordingly this is the schema this is the content version parameters taking in storage account name i am also taking in the description this is the metadata property so for each of the uh, storage so here if i type if you can see this is the storage account type and also the container name because i am deploying container in the storage account and also the location so all these different types of properties which you observe in portal you can give it here in parameters you can hard code the default value or else you can uh, make it configurable as well from your script so i have hard coded the default value here and i am giving the allowed values as this options for the user so that they can select in the script for the container name i am giving media because i want the users to upload all the images and video file in the blob and the this location of the storage account once i have that this is the resource section so this is the important thing this resource is of type storage account that is how arm template knows this is i want to create a storage account and this is the version everything else remains the same inside the resources if you observe i have also another resource what i am doing is if i want to deploy one resource inside the another so right now container will be deployed inside storage account so you have to give it that in the array format once i have that ready your whole arm template is ready and it is ready to to be deployed and how you are going to deploy with the one liner code 
this is the code which I'm going to take up. Let's just go ahead and change the name of the storage account. Global demo um, temp. Okay. This is how I will change it. I will deploy. Let's just grab this script. Deploy it. And if you observe, I'm giving the storage account type as GRS and not the LRS. And LR, because LRS was already mentioned here, let's just see what it does. This was a default, but I gave it GRS, it will override. So let's look at this deploying. We can see from here as well. The deployment, if you observe, this deployment is in progress. Oops. Let's just go ahead and type equal storage account so that I can see whether my storage account was deployed or not. Let's just give it a moment to refresh. Wow. Let's just see what it did. So if you observe, what it is doing is my script ran and it is giving me some error. This is the deployment error. This error failed because same resource, no registered resource provider found for the location. So what it is doing is I tried deploying this and it is saying me that same account did not already exist and I, I was trying to change it. So what it did is throw an error. What we will do is we'll go to our ARM template. This is my ARM template. This is the default value and I'll go to the script. What I will do is I will deploy first the ARM. This will be the deployment and then we'll change the storage account type. Because no resource existed, it gave me error that I want to change the type of storage account, but such a storage account does not exist. Now, when I dip, now see the storage account is already there and it got deployed through the ARM template. This is the name type container. These are the properties. Now I can update the property. See, it should not create a new storage account. Wow, done. It updated my, I did not wrote any single line of code that please check whether such exists or not. It already updated. Now what if I, I delete my container and I deploy it again? Let's do that. Refresh. Um, um, yeah. I will delete my container. Okay, I, I did not create the container. It should have created it. Not sure why I did not create a container, but it should have. Container name I am getting to see here as media. Let's just give it a moment to refresh. Why am I not seeing? Maybe, not sure, it, I picked up the wrong one. Let me grab the name. If I delete it, then I should, let me just go here, just a second. We see that scenario as well, so that you all get a glimpse of how. Okay. Oh, not sure why I did not create. While I can see that the container media was created. Okay, if I delete the container and I deploy the same script again, it will create a container for me because it will say that, okay, my, uh, I did not see the container inside my template because that was the end result. This is your end result, which it should always follow. It will always take this as a blueprint and it will check whether this thing exists or not and it will deploy it. So this is how your declarative approach works. If you want to do the same thing using Terraform, Terraform also forms uh, follows the same approach, even Bicep. Bicep is uh, built on top of ARM. ARM only, it will, you just have to containerize. Bicep works with different type of files. You have to give main file and then there will be a supporting file which will just, just deploy storage account. So that is how the Bicep works. I'll not go into that much depth today because I have YAML to cover and I don't have much time. So let's just, now we saw about declarative approach. Also, uh, we will look into one beautiful thing which is pipeline deployment. So this is a good, which I want to cover and this is the utmost important thing. Till now, what we covered is we covered things in fraction. So right now we deployed using PowerShell, we deployed using ARM. But when we try to automate or you try to scale things at, at the higher level, 
how you do that you have to create you have to automate that and how you can do using devops pipeline so let's just go ahead and see the devops pipeline so i'm going to use the azure powershell at 5 this is the task which i'm going to use it in my yaml pipeline what i will do is this task what it does is it takes your powershell file and deploy it whenever the pipeline is triggered so definitely your pipeline trigger will be based on some action whenever there is a code change or whenever the version updates you uh, your pipeline will be your pipeline will run and it will deploy or it will provision the resources this is what i'm going to do and this is how your pipeline will look like or your yaml code this task which i have written here version 5 i'm going to use that it takes your subscription it takes the powershell version and the file as well uh, i think it got missed out but yeah this is the pipeline it will trigger whenever the dev branch is updated and i am working on the windows image and not on ubuntu hence this is the type of tool i am selected and the steps i am giving is this is the powershell task subscription i'm asking it to grab the subscription of this service connection we'll take a look at that i'm giving the script which is my, uh, which is residing in my file path this is the script which i want to run and the latest version of the powershell should be used let's just go ahead and see that in action okay this is my devops and if you go to the pipeline <coughs> sorry this is the identity pipeline this is the exact pipeline which i have run if i click on the settings this is the task which i am using azure powershell i am not writing inline script because that is now you that is not how you automate you have to give your uh, you ha you'll have your file which will ha hold that code and that will be that should run inline script you can do that if you are just trying to do a poc how it works you can line the uh, write down the scripts in line i am giving a file path let's just see this is the azure bootcamp file path this is in this folder this is my powershell script and in this script i'm just creating a resource group and i'm writing few lines this is just it and basically i'm creating a connection and creating a resource group now important step here is okay i gave my file path i'm using the latest version if there is an error it should stop i keyed in all the information first imp most important thing is how it will connect and with whose credentials whose connections it is going to take because in script the user had that ident uh, user had the flexibility that okay i can choose this or not but here how you can do that you can, you have to go to your project settings you have to go to the service connections create your service connection this is the service connection i am using i'll click on edit i am uh, giving the subscription id subscription name i've created a azure app registered and using that registered app i am keying in the principal id and secret id secret tenant id and etc and this is a name this is how you are going to all, you always have to create a connection so that using this connections the deployment will happen this is what i have done if i go to my pipeline i am using the deploy azure so connections and let's just run the pipeline right now i i haven't modified it so i'll run it manually this is the job so let's just give it a minute to run this agent yeah it is initialized it is going to check my environment now it is running powershell if you observe this was the module easy accounts context was created account got created it is connecting to the account maybe i do not have the access to the account let's see what happens see it is retrying the connection so at least for five times it will try to connect if not then it will fail let's see so from here you are able to see this is a command line wherein you you can observe each and every step what is happening what failed what went wrong and everything now let's look at what happened my connection failed that is what this happens so ideally when you try to connect az to az account this api behind the scenes runs for five times and if it wasn't able to connect for five times and it failed now if i change my connections because that connection which i created was of my different environment 
uh, which right now uh, is not active. Hence, it failed. If it would have been uh, active, then I would have been able to deploy this. What I can do is I can create a service connection with the updated account which I have right now, and then I can create an app registered. I can feed all the details which I, which was needed, and then this pipeline would have run. But if I want to show you that exact same resource group, I was able to deploy that. But this is in a different environment and different scope. So you can run that was run using the pipeline, exact pipeline, same pipe, piece of code I had written, and it was able to deploy a resource group for me. So this is how you can follow each information. So if you can see, I was able to grab the information. It was not able to authenticate, and hence it was not able to create or run. So this is how beautifully pipeline runs, and it gives you all details of each and everything. So pipeline deployment is basically your automotive approach when you want to uh, deploy your infrastructure, same infrastructure in different environments, or if you want to repeat repetitive uh, kind of approach. So whenever version is in incremented or whenever some code changes are happened, then please deploy it to the dev environment so that I can test it. So this is how pipeline will help you to do, do that. Now let's just go ahead and look at the difference between declarative and imperative approaches. So this is what I've written down. Declarative approach, definitely it was a JSON, so it requires less coding skill. Repeatable, definitely it is highly repeatable because you can reuse, reuse that same piece of code uh, in different scenarios and different environment. All you just have to do is update the parameter. You can create a parameter file, a parameter JSON file, which when, wherein, uh, which will hold the different environment. So for each environment, you have a different parameter file and you can run that for that same particular deployment. So that is how it is repeatable, it is reusable, adapts well to the configuration, definitely, which I mentioned. You can adhere to any different type of parameters, be dev and uh, environment abroad. All you have to do is just maintain that in different files. Imperative approach, you can control definitely because you have the control over each step, whether that storage account exists or if container is deleted, please create it for me. Those all things you can control here. It is ideal when you have to perform you know, simple operations. When it comes to complex whole infrastructure deployment, you can't uh, add in all the scenarios in one script. So that is a bit tedious for that. Follows a, uh, definitely a step-by-step -step approach. If a step is missed, then uh, everything is went wrong. And disadvantages of both, because for pro uh, uh, imperative, you need a lot of programming knowledge. And it is not reusable because it is only created for a specific scenario. And for declarative, definitely you don't have control. Everything is done by templates and you can't over complicate uh, the simple tasks. And maybe it is you don't you can't conceptualize very harder. So this, th these are the small disadvantages of declarative approach. And uh, definitely we saw everything in action. So I hope you all gained some insights how you can do that by imperative or declarative approach. And these are the references which if, if you want to follow. I have created a blog as well, wherein all the scripts are mentioned for the same. And also I've used Microsoft uh, documentation. Definitely this is the main documentation which you can refer anytime you want to. So if you have any queries, then you can please let me know. Uh, thank you so much for listening so patiently on a weekend. And thank you Azure Tech Pune Tech community, uh, whole team, for giving us a chance to speak and spread our knowledge.